Hi, this is part two of Psalms, First Samuel chapter twenty-three. I like the thread, the connection in a in a chapter because it helps you to have a very solid and a very firm uh, analysis. Now, I want to talk about still uh, on David, but this time. David is talking about the godless people. Now, do you think they are godless people? Yes, they are there. Godless people are people who fear no God. Now, this is in chapter somewhere, chapter 23, from verse. If you read on the whole of it, I like when I talk about the whole chapter because when you read the whole chapter, then you have a good context on what you are talking about. Now, if the Bible talks about whatever the Bible talks about, it is the inspired word of God. And therefore, that is the breath and that is the word of God. Now, if we have, the, David is talking about godless people. Who is a godless person? The word itself means less. is a person without God. And it's a person who fears God. And is a person who has no concern, no place, no heart, and no feelings for God. In a sense, a godless person to a Christian is an enemy to a Christian. And is a God, it's a hater of God. The hater. Hater. There are people who hate. They hate God. And therefore they are godless. Now, uh, David said, God, David is saying that godless people are like thorns that are thrown away. What is a thorn? A thorn is something that pricks you, that can hurt you, hurt you, wound you, that you are left bleeding, bleeding. And thorn, where you find a thorn, it's never found alone. But thorns are normally a cluster of thorns. And where thorns grow, normally they grow in very dry places. And so thorns are things that hurt somebody. Now, if a thorn can hurt you, actually it is designed. It is it was it was planted. It was designed, made and manufactured and it has the DNA that is a thorn of hurting, of wounding and even the shape of a thorn has been crafted to actually penetrate into a human skin and leave you wailing and crying and weeping and David is saying that godless people and therefore the enemies of a Christian they, they are designed and they have been crafted and they look like thorns ready to attack. A thorn is always ready to attack and eventually prick you and hurt you and plunge into your flesh and you are left hurting and you are left crying and you are left hey, weeping. Now, I like the I like the presentation of David. And David said, Godless people, they are like thorns that should be thrown away. And therefore, godless people, those people who that you know, they are therefore your enemies and they will hurt you. Throw them away. Avoid them. And when you avoid them, let them be banned. And not only that, David goes on and says, these dogs and these godless people, therefore, they should not, you should not, and they must not be touched by bare hands. Now, there are people you don't touch. There are situations you don't touch. Because the moment you touch them, 
sure enough, they will, they will attack you. They will revenge. And not only that one, they will leave you bleeding. A thorn, leave, a thorn will pierce you, will prick you, and will leave you hurting and bleeding. And David says, these godless people, they should not be, they must not be, they sh you have not to touch them with bare hands, but you touch them, you attack them, you go against them. Listen to this one. You go against them using iron tools and spears. Now, this is David talking that godless people, those are always ready to attack. And those are always ready to pierce and to destroy you. And if you're not careful, they'll break and break into you. And they leave a wound. And so, to a Christian, because David is not literally talking about you taking a spear or you taking an iron tool, God, David is talking about the prayers we make, that as Christians, the prayers we make, they must be like the spears. A spear is some, it's a weapon that is designed to be used against an enemy. And in the ancient time, spears were tools and they were weapons of attack. And they were used to, they were well designed, prepared, even poisoned. The ancient communities would even poison their arrows. And not only that one, they would sit and craft them. Your prayers should be crafted. Your prayers should be designed. And your prayers should be made in a way that when you pray against any situation, surely as God says, he'll never abandon you. Those prayers will go and do the work of an arrow. They'll go and do the work of a spear. Now, those, the spear, the spear men, or the spear man, hey, and the spear woman, <laughs> hey, and the spear woman, they sank, they were trained, and they, they, were, they, they were well trained, and they were well equipped on how to use the spears. And they not only used a spear like that has one, but we are told a spearman had a, a cluster and a bundle of spears. Therefore, when a Christian prays, you need to have one, two, three hey, spears. Then David says that godless people must, and I want you to read Psalms. Uh, first Samuel first Samuel chapter 23 David insists and this was David man walking with God with God by God and God will bless him and we are told David surely he became a militant a warrior a fighter and he shed so much blood in his time that God even when David says God, I want to build you a temple. God, David loved God. Do you love God? I love him. And he tells God, I want to build you a temple, my father, my Lord. I live, I live in a palace. God had blessed David. God will bless you. God will be with you. And God will not leave you struggling to survive. Christians are meant to thrive. To live. And David tells God, I want to make and to build you a temple. God tells him, mm -mm, there are things God will refuse you. You cannot build me a house, David, my son. You, you, hey, where were David? You cannot. You have shed so much blood that you no, know, it's your son Solomon who will do that one. What am I saying? David had walked with God. He knew God. More than we do, and most of us know God. 
because there is a level you touch, you walk, and you 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 live with God. Now David says, and it is a must that when you attach, when you touch the godless, you must have a spear and an iron tool. Now in the ancient kingdoms, the nation there was an era and a time of the iron the iron age they call it the iron age and the nation that embraced and they acquired and they used iron tools they were very successful and they subdued they conquered they subdued and destroyed all other nations because their weapons of iron were superior no what are your what are your prayers what are they made of which means as christians when we pray we need to have various type of prayers and these prayers must david says you don't go uh, don't go bare hands don't go bare open naked like a fool you attack your enemies. Enemies who attack. And the ancient kingdom. And the kingdoms that actually would attack other nations when it was during battle time. Nations would prepare. And they were good enough. They would not attack each other empty handed. Could David look at even King Saul and David and Goliath? King Saul was well trained and had trained his army very well. The Philistines were well trained and they were well armored. And even for David to actually destroy Goliath, he does not go bare hand. Don't go bare hand. Don't go without a weapon. Don't go before without an arrow, without a spear, and without an iron tool. Because surely when you do that one, the casualties, the injuries, the hurt, the bleeding, the destruction. Hey, that is the power of a Christian. And he says, if you read uh, uh, eventually, he says, and the enemies will surely be destroyed. And God is right behind us. And God fights over our battles. And therefore, when you are prepared, because therefore you become a soldier and you are king and the army commander in your warfare is the Lord Almighty. We only follow instructions and instructions are very, very important. You don't follow instruction in a warfare, in a battlefield, and surely you are done. But you follow the instruction, you obey, you will succeed. And David says, and the enemies will completely be burnt out. And God says, I will never abandon you or leave you. And he tells Joshua, Joshua, rise up, prepare, hey, hey, prepare. <laughs> Who is God? It is amazing. It is interesting. Let us read the word of God and may God be with us. That's the word of the Lord. And I wish you all the best and may God bless you, bless me, and may we be together. Kindly subscribe, subscribe, and subscribe. Subscribe. May God bless you. And the Lord says, And the gates of hell shall not prevail. But the church of Christ will be built. May the Lord hear us. May the Lord be with us. And may we be shown. May you, I, myself, and together, may we do and be wise. Not to go into a battlefield naked, bare hands, barefoot. We need a shield and we need that protection. And we need the training and we need the equipment. And we need to be armed. That is the word of God. May God bless us. Thank you. Amen.